Amador County Farm Day, bringing agriculture to the classroom. I'm Joan and this is Betty. We're master gardeners and we're here to talk about butterflies because we like butterflies in our garden. We do. And we're really sorry we can't see you in person. We love hearing all your questions. So if you have questions while we're talking, just put them in your mind here and maybe ask your teacher or ask your parents um, and or look it up on the website. And we hope you learn a lot today about butterflies. So we're going to read a book to you today. It's called A Butterfly is Patient. Here's some pictures of butterflies. Butterfly is patient. A butterfly is patient. It begins as an egg beneath an umbrella of leaves, protected from rain, hidden from creatures that might harm it, until the caterpillar inside chews free from its egg casing, tiny, wingless, hungry to grow. This is a picture of the blue eggs of the painted lady. She laid them in, at the fair in our cage. Now a mother, butter, mother butterfly chooses the leaf for her babies very carefully because she knows they're going to be very hungry when they come out and they're very fussy eaters. You have to be quite careful of what plants you have in your garden to encourage the butterflies. Are you fussy eaters, any of you? Oh, I'll bet there are a couple of them. There usually are. <laughs> a butterfly is creative. A caterpillar feeds on leaves, eating so much that it must molt or shed its skin many times. It can grow up to 30,000 times larger than it was when it took its very first bite. Now you have a skeleton inside your body it has bones that grow, and you have a skin on the outside, that, and it grows too. However, the poor caterpillar has an exoskeleton that's on the outside, and it does not grow. So that's why the caterpillar has to molt to get to be a bigger size. And when it does, it must be rather like trying to get out of a t-shirt that you've outgrown. Once a caterpillar has eaten all that it needs, it creates a protective covering called a chrysalis. Curled inside the chrysalis, it is growing wings. Now it is time for metamorphosis, changing from one form to another. Like the monarch. A butterfly is helpful. Butterflies, like bees, help pollinate plants so that they can reproduce or make seeds. As a butterfly flits from flower to flower, sipping nectar, tiny grains of pollen cling to its body and then fall away onto other flowers. Seeds are only produced when pollen is transferred between flowers of the same species. This is called pollination. Can you see the yellow pollen that's right on this butterfly there? This is one of the reasons why we like butterflies in our garden. They help things grow. A butterfly is protective. Butterflies use their wings to protect themselves from predators, such as hungry birds, lizards, and other insects. Some butterflies have markings on their wings called eye spots. Scientists don't know what they're used for, perhaps to scare away predators or attract mates. This is the owl butterfly. Can you see? Does that look like an owl to you? Let me flip it over and show you upside down. It really does look like an owl. Wings can help butterflies camouflage or hide themselves in the environment. One kind of butterfly, the peacock butterfly, makes a hissing sound by rubbing its wings together when it is alarmed. This is an orange oak leaf butterfly. Do you think you could find that if it was trying to hide in a tree? I don't think I could. Could you? Bet I don't think I could either. It looks pretty, pretty well camouflaged. 
a butterfly is poisonous. The warning colors of some butterflies' wings, yellows, reds, oranges, whites, and blacks, tell predators that they are poisonous or bad tasting. Monarchs and pipevine swallowtails eat poisonous plants when they're caterpillars so that they can become poisonous as adults. Birds and other insects have learned not to eat them. Now, here's some pictures of some monarch caterpillars on a milkweed. And here is the milkweed growing in our rose garden. And it turns out that California monarchs are very picky, those caterpillars. They only eat California native milkweed. So when you go to plant some, you want to be careful which kind you get, because there are lots of them. A butterfly is spectacular. Just look at all these different butterflies. And that's another reason why we really like butterflies in our garden. They're just fun to watch. Do you know what the California state insect is, boys and girls? We're going to show you. It's the dog-faced butterfly. Can you see the dog face in that and butterfly? Yeah, you can see, it kind of matches in there. I had to have somebody point out the picture to me before I saw it. But it does really look like a dog. And do you know this butterfly only lives in California, nowhere else in the whole world. And do you know it was fourth graders who made this the state insect. Back in the 1970s, they got very interested in this butterfly. And with their teacher, they wrote to a state assemblyman and said, can you create a bill and make this a state insect? Well, it took a few tries, but they didn't give up. Give up. And in 1972, the dog-faced butterfly was named the California state insect. So boys and girls, even if you're just in third grade right now, there's no limit to what you too can do. No These fourth limit, graders did no it. No limit at all. And we encourage you to try things. And if you're interested and your teacher can find it, here's a whole story about the dog-faced butterfly. Written by Fran Keller. A butterfly is thirsty. To find flowers, butterflies smell the air with their antenna, they taste with their feet, but they sip nectar, the sweet liquid produced by many flowers, with a proboscis, a tongue that coils and uncoils. And did you know that butterflies are nearsighted? That means they can see things that are close to them. But far away, things are kind of fuzzy. So if you were planting a garden, would you stick just one flower in the garden? Nah. You could put a bunch of them, and that would be a little better. But maybe some great big bright ones. And these have a nice flat place for the butterfly to land. Some butterflies get their nourishment from rotting fruit, the blue morpho, or minerals. Often a kaleidoscope of butterflies gathers as a puddle club in mud near a pond or a lake to drink water rich in salts and minerals. I think we should try making a puddle a little later, don't you? That would be great. Okay. I need one in my garden. Well, let me tell you about what the butterfly lady told us when we had some butterflies at the fair. She said, you feed them with watermelon. It's got water, lots of it, and sugars, which gives energy, and minerals. Hmm. And the butterflies, of course, loved it. They did, they did. A butterfly is big. The rare Queen Alexandra's bird wing is the largest butterfly in the world with wings that can span up to one foot. It lives in the rainforest in northern Papua, New Guinea. Now we don't have any, but you can see why they called it bird wing. Doesn't that look like quite a fierce looking bird? You wouldn't want to attack that, especially when it was a foot big. It looks like an eagle. It does. It's quite amazing. A butterfly is tiny. 
The smallest is the rarely seen Aryan small blue found in Afghanistan with a wingspan of less than one third of an inch, about the length of a grain of rice. Tiny. We don't have any of those, and that, there it is, but we do have a skipper, a checkered skipper, and it's about an inch big. It looks like that. Only that's, of course, bigger. A butterfly is scaly. A rainbow of shiny, powdery scales covers the wings of a butterfly, scales stacked like shingles on a roof. Without scales, its wings would be as transparent as the wings of a bee or a dragonfly. This is a picture from an electron microscope magnified thousands of times. And they do look like shingles, but more colorful. Beautiful. I'd love shingles like that on my house. The colors, patterns, and shapes of a butterfly's wings have a purpose. Some use their pattern of colors to attract mates. In places where the climate is cool, dark scales absorb heat from the sun, warming the butterfly's flight muscles. Butterflies are cold-blooded, and they must have a body temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit to be able to fly. Remember our orange oak leaf butterfly? Well, it's dark, and that is to keep it warm, but it's much easier to identify when it opens up its wings. Isn't that impressive? A butterfly is not a moth. Butterflies and moths do belong to the same family of insects, the Lepidoptera, which means scale wing. They are the only insects with scaly wings, but there are differences between them. Moths appeared on Earth between 100 and 190 million years ago. Butterflies, 40 million years ago, during the Cretaceous period, when flowering plants and the nectar that most butterflies need to survive evolved. Nearly every kind of butterfly flies during the day, while most moths fly at night. A moth spins a cocoon made of silk while a butterfly wraps itself in a chrysalis or exoskeleton made from its own skin. There is a silky uh, moth cocoon and a chrysalis. So that's the difference between a chrysalis and a cocoon. And the other major difference between butterflies and moths are the antenna. See, the butterflies are very thin with a blob on the end. but the moths are feathering. They look kind of silly too, don't they? They, they look kind of like goats. <laughs> I taught, uh, well, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade some years ago, and we always had silkworms, which grow into silk moths. And it was fascinating because when you were talking about how important it is to know what different caterpillars eat, the silkworms would only eat mulberry leaves. And one day, one of my students brought in some leaves that looked just like mulberry leaves, but the silkworm moths wouldn't, silkworms at that point, would not touch them. They turned up their nose and they said, nope, we want mulberries. Another so. reason for you to be careful of what you plant in your garden if you're expecting something to conjoin you. Exactly. A butterfly is a traveler. Most butterflies, such as the red admiral or the common buckeye, migrate a short distance to find a warmer place. But some, like the monarch, travel far. Although monarchs weigh only as much as a few rose petals, they can fly almost 3,000 miles from Canada to their winter home in Mexico at a rate of 20 miles an hour. Glider pilots have reported seeing monarchs flying at an altitude of 11,000 feet. That's higher than some clouds. Amazing. Now the book talks about eastern monarchs, which go from Canada to Mexico and back again. However, we're California and we've got something different. They go from about the Rocky Mountains to the west coast. And then they winter on the west coast where it's much more mild. A butterfly is magical. Monarchs gather in huge numbers in the forests of central Mexico, waiting for spring. Then they fly north to the milkweed plants in North America, 
where they lay their eggs. Now it is time again for their metamorphosis. Do you remember what metamorphosis is, boys and girls? Now, we're lucky here in California because they gather in big places on the coast. And one place is Pacific Grove, where they come most every year. <laughs> and if you're like Kevin, you might even have one of the butterflies land on you for an up-close and personal visit. A butterfly is patient. The egg hatches, the caterpillar emerges, feasting on leaves before it wraps itself into its warm, protective chrysalis, patiently waiting to soar. Soar. So Joan, we talked about a mud puddle for the butterflies. Do you think we could make one? Well, you know, I just happened to bring the pieces. Should we go try it? Yes, I would love to make one for my garden. My butterflies are thirsty. <laughs> okay, do you All know right. how we start? No, tell me. Well, you need a container, something without a hole in the bottom. Why no hole? Well, we're trying to collect water so that the butterflies can drink. Oh, so we need okay. something that'll actually contain the water. Can it be any container? Pretty much. You probably don't want it too deep because you'd have a lot of material there. But, and bigger might be better because it would hold more water and you wouldn't have to keep it as wet or fill it, refill it very often. Okay. But I've got this one. It's just a clay pot mm -hmm. that goes under other pots. And this one happens to be glazed, but that's not necessary. But it should help it hold water at this point. So we just pour water into it and we're done? No, no. We actually make a puddle because we oh, want that mud. Okay because that's where they get the, the um, m minerals, remember? Yes. Okay. Okay, so where, how do we start? We need some sand. Okay. You tell and me how much? Just, this happened to be from a bag of sand we got for some other project, but most any sand will do. Tell me about how much. Uh, well, I'm thinking that maybe a quarter of the way up. This is the reservoir. This is going to hold the water that sinks through our mud and so forth. Is that and enough? keeps the water so that when the soil does dry out, it can wick back up from this. Oh, so what goes on it next? Ah, the important part, soil or dirt. And this is just some that Lynn, my husband, just dug up for me. And it's quite sandy, oh. which will do just fine. Okay. And, but if you have clay soil, that'll work too. It's got lots of minerals in it. But... There's one thing you want to be careful of. Do you know what that might be? Is it something that shouldn't have herbicides and pesticides in exactly. it? Exactly. Okay. Because that could really poison the butterflies, right? Exactly. Okay. So you want to make sure your soil is safe. Okay. Now, how much soil do you put in from that? Well, I did, oh, I've got an ant. <laughs> Um, that's probably the main part, so we'll fill it up pretty well. Okay. And we're building layers so that okay, the water. Okay, we're not can mixing it. We're no, just we're there's not a little ant, it. but I guess the ant can. Okay, more. Yep. Let's. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's got some organic material that'll mm -hmm. have some vitamins and things. I think that might do it. Okay. If the All pot's right. a little deeper, you can have a little, whoops, we do have ants. Um, <laughs> we can have extra so that it'll hold a little more water, but we have to be a little careful. Okay. Because butterflies are light. Now, do we pour water onto it now? No, no, we need one more thing. Hmm. Butterflies are very light and they can't swim. They oh, could drown. Okay. So we need to make a landing spot. A landing spot for them, okay. That sounds good. So some gravel. Now it can be pretty much any size. And in <gasps> fact, we could even use a big rock in the middle. That's like a landing pad but for the butterflies. But this might be your artistic bit, but you can use bigger rocks. You just want to make sure that the water can get um, between it. So that... <laughs> <laughs> Ants are having a good time. <laughs> so that um, the water can come up and the butterfly can actually get to it. Okay. I'm not sure where this gravel came from, but 
we want to press it down in like I said we want the water to be able to percolate through it a little bit okay. so the butterfly can actually get to it okay. well I think that might be a little much right there let's spread it out a little bit Okay, and then, and then a little landing pad. Okay. Okay, and now I'm guessing the only thing left is the water. Exactly. But since water's kind of messy, we probably ought to put it in the garden first and then water it. Okay. So shall we... I've I'll got bring the water. Yeah. I think we've got it over by the milkweed. We're going to pick a spot for it to put it that's in the sunshine and near what the butterfly might be looking for. Flowers for nectar. Milkweed to eat. Your milkweed to eat, lay eggs, and if you turn a pot upside down and put it in the garden <gasps> and then put it on top. It's garden art. Garden art. It's beautiful. So now I can pour water onto now it? you can pour water on it. Okay. When we actually had kids, they really enjoyed pouring the water on it. But now that water will soak into the mud and, look and at the it mud soak. will leach, well the mud, vitamins and minerals will leach out of the soil and when the butterfly drinks, it'll have a very nutritious drink. I'll put some right on here, too. Now, so what do you suppose the catch is with all this? Well, I'm already seeing the water going right down into the soil and the sand, so I'm wondering if you have to water it pretty often. Yes, because we've got okay. hot weather, and it's going to evaporate pretty quickly. Right. It's already gone down, so I'm going to add a little bit more. So if you've got a sprinkler near it and that can feed it, that's good. Oops. But you'll want to pay attention at first to see if it's staying. So boys and girls, we hope you will build your own little butterfly mud puddle. The butterflies will be able to get in there and get their nutrients, minerals, some water, and you'll have butterflies in your garden. And if you plant lots of different plants, bright flowers, you may have lots of butterflies as well as some caterpillars. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for being such a great audience and hope we see you in person sometime soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Amador County Farm Day is brought to you by the University of California Division of Agriculture and Natural Resources 4-H program, the Amador County Farm Bureau, the City of Plymouth, the Amador Resource Conservation District, Charles Spinetta Winery and Vineyard, Tumbis Vineyards, CGDRE Vineyard and Winery, Cooper Vineyards, Sierra Pacific Industries, and your local farmers, ranchers, foresters, and agricultural professionals. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more educational videos.